In this episode, we're going to study from life using real live footage. <laughs> this is the most fun of it all and the most challenging. I expect most of you to be pretty hesitant when you're studying from life because you're having a hard time capturing something you're not very familiar with. But that was why we studied the skeletal structure first and then we got into the basic forms of anatomy. So we can kind of make sense of what we're looking at when we're studying from life. We can think about what the skeletal structure is doing while under all of that muscles and fur of that actual moving subject. And this is where you're really going to want to pay attention to the subtlety of the natural movements, the energy in those movements. All of this will help make your creatures more dynamic. Uh, with the goal of this course. That's really the goal of studying from life is to get those fundamentals um, of the source material and translate that into a more dynamic, believable design because it's based on some naturalistic behaviors, gestures and poses and subtle personalities that you find in a real animal. One other thing to consider is don't worry about making a pretty drawing. I want you to learn. I want you to be able to look back at the drawings, walk away from this episode and feel you have a better understanding of the natural movements and poses of the source material, in this case, apes. If you want to practice drawing from live footage, jump over to proga.com slash Coleman to get some of the reference videos for free. The full course includes lessons and resources, though. So go get it to unlock his visual development training regimen. From understanding anatomy, to gesture, to master studies, and shape design. You'll come out of this course with your own new creature or character, and you'll have fun doing it. Go grab it at proca.com slash Coleman. All right, so we have provided quite a bit of footage for you all. Really wonderful, actually. One thing, don't pause the footage. That just becomes a photograph. Let the footage play over and over again. You can loop it if you want. Uh, that's you know, there's nothing against that, but you want to draw if it's moving. You want to draw if you're actually there. You're going to capture some of the essence of the gesture just by watching the moving subject as opposed to pausing it, okay? One other thing to consider as a benefit from studying from live footage and letting it keep moving is you're seeing the before and the after. You're understanding how that animal got into that pose. Just like when you're designing your own creatures, you want to think about the A and the C while drawing the B. It makes your, your, your subject feel like it's still moving. If you're actually envisioning what the previous frame would be and what the post frame would be, right? What, and then what you're capturing, you have this, it creates more of a kinetic energy. So here's just even a gorilla and just even trying to get the pose down. I mean, you look how loose I'm staying, right? Now, these type of big creatures would be a little bit more uh, sedentary, but you almost want to picture or almost take a photograph or a snapshot of one of the angles and then commit, right? So, look, so there's little key landmarks to even look at, right? Like when his, when his muzzle and his face goes profile, which I've chosen here, notice how his other shoulder almost disappears. Look how loose it is. Okay? I'm not really looking at the footage now, but look how loose it is. Um, and I'm also thinking about the shoulder, right? All the rhythms of the bones underneath there, okay? But there's like a dynamic feel even in its subtlety. This one, let's go ahead and open up and set a loop. And take some time to observe it while you're drawing from the footage, okay? Don't have to start drawing right away. Drawing is more thinking than actual drawing. If you're going to watch this in nature and you're studying over at the zoo at a, where the monkey enclosure is, you might sit there and just observe it for a little while. So notice the behavior. Start to think about some of the subtleties, you know. So you can even see how, how high his shoulders are, right? And that longer torso as he's trying to gesture and grab something in the air. So almost think about it, if you had a creature that was trying to grab, it was a big creature and it was playing with this small little fairy or something, right? Uh, that might be a way to kind of picture it. And then as he sits down, right? And as he's clapping at the air. And as he starts to clap, you can feel his shoulders kind of come up, right? And look how loose I'm staying through all of this, right? Finding the rhythms. And I'm not even picking up my stylus or pencil, whatever, you have, whatever you're drawing with. I'm just kind of feeling it out, getting some basic structure. And, and once again, drawing upon what we studied, like the basic muzzle structure when we were dealing with the skeletons. 
skulls, I should say, even some of the masses of the muscular musculature anatomy, muscular structure we were dealing with. All of that is coming into play when I'm studying from life. You have a better sense of what you're looking at because you've seen the flayed version, right? The part that was skinned down to the, to the bones, then from the superficial muscle, um, and now you're, you're dealing with it from life. Drawing it in, in what you actually see is be seen by the naked eye. You can really feel the extension. He's clapping his hands, right? It's like he's trying to capture bugs and stuff. And that's how you know if you are successful, if you walk away from it and you go, I can tell kind of what he's doing, right? I mean, I could actually, creating a little bit of story here, you know, draw a little butterfly. He's going after it, right? You really are drawing the story of the subject in the pose. You're creating a narrative description of what that subject's doing, whether it be your own imaginative creatures or, you know, studying from life if you're even just drawing like an animal that either out of your head or from something you've seen. Can you walk away from it with enough information? That's what you need to look at it for. And you can see how quick I've gone through this um, and I've captured the, the essence. And you could start to detail it out if you will a little bit, especially since we've got this loop feature going. See how long the muzzle is, right? And if you were drawing from life and the animal kept moving around, you should be able to capture enough in the initial pose and then just keep referring back to the animal that it's continuing to move and try to really analyze and deduct how those shapes and forms look like from the angle that you're actually drawing it from. If a antelope is looking at you just standing there and you do a quick little pose, right? And then it's going to move and then you're like, oh, I didn't get the rest of the forms. Just keep referring to that animal as it's moving around and try to understand the three-dimensional forms from all angles and then apply it to the pose that you first captured. I mean, even see when the monkey first starts out, look at that arch of the back, right? That spine. And this the spine goes up into the head, skull. I'm flowing everything into one another. Kind of is given up on his quest there. Feel that shoulder as he kind of comes, yeah, as he kind of comes forward, right? You really want to feel the pose. I know it's been said a million times before you've heard that from many different teachers and, and, and instructional, instructional material, but it is true. And luckily, with the first part of this course, we're dealing with apes, which is our most, which our closest relative. So you can kind of feel that pose uh, more so than if you're doing this for the first time and you're dealing with like a, a horse, you know, something you're not really familiar with, even on a cerebral uh, relative level. And you can see how even how I flowed the tail off the back, making it one long line of action. There's so many to go through. Jump back to a monkey. Monkey. Once again, observe first. You can just start drawing if you want, but you might find yourself getting a little frustrated, okay? I love that pose. Right as he's about to jump, you can feel that. That's the A of the frame, right? Or the A of the action. The B is the leap and the C is when he lands. But you can feel that antic almost, right? I just saw the arch of the back. That's all I saw. So that's what I'm going for first, right? Watch him. Kind of gets down. Ooh, yeah. And it's definitely not perfect, right? But the feeling is there, right? Did you capture the feeling of it all? Otherwise, just take a photograph if you want to make it exact. Right? And now looking at it, it's like he even got his leg forward more, but there's something to that. I kind of like that he puts the leg forward. I can feel he starts to bend in here. The tail goes up as it's coming off the spine, right? Not really getting too much into faces. I do like the idea of putting his head up a little bit more like he's looking what he's about to leap to. So once again, problem solver, making it work for me. And as you're doing this, just remember to think back what we learned in the previous episodes, okay? About the understructure being the skeleton and skulls, and then the basic, very basic uh, anatomical forms that we learned in one of the other episodes. And that all adds up to make this a little bit more of a successful lesson for you because um, you can get a better idea of what you're looking at. So let's pick another part of a pose and start a little bit more step through of the process here. So he walks down here, looking around, right? Suddenly, right as he walks down, okay, so what I see here is the back. He puts that arm down. Got another one here. Notice the heads. I'm not starting with the heads. The heads is the cap on the end. There's no movement there. It makes more sense to come off here like this. The elbow bends back as he comes forward, right? What's kind of cool this way is you're getting to see it stretched out. Once again, thinking about where the scapula would be, right? The back of that rib cage down is the elbow and the radius and ulna. So he's kind of standing there first like this, you know, basically. And then 
what's going on underneath as it's bending up. Remember when I was doing the skeletal studies, I was being very loose and scribbly like this because I'm thinking about, I have the advantage of knowing what's coming next um, and how it's gonna benefit you from understanding from that level. Uh, yes, my work is loose and sketchy, uh, but it really helps, it gives it a dynamic feel, especially for the sake of this course, it's very much a benefit for you to see it at this level. Uh, but as you saw it in the roadmap, you can also take that and then fully render it out with the understanding of all of the movement underneath that you first started with. So as that's coming forward, thinking about like where he wants to know where that elbow is, right? Puts his hand down. And that's the start of the movement. You know, once again, I doing putting it this way, moving the head in that way because it just feels more natural. You want to capture the subtlety of those natural movements. He's really starting to extend down, and it's like he's maybe he's looking at something as the, and the hands are coming down. Feel the pressure, the weight of that wrist as it's bent, right? Get messy. It's another reason why I'm actually not editing even myself on this, uh, because I want you to not make a pretty drawing. I want you to make an informative drawing. And if that requires more line than normal for you to successfully capture the movement that you're studying, then go for it. Each time you change a direction, stop, sketch like this, or like this, or like this, each time that happens, the synapses in your brain turn on and off. Um, and the eye has to take time to navigate that form. So it doesn't become very displeasing and you lose the appeal. So that's another reason why I'm doing kind of these longer lines here, right? So try to avoid that. Very scribbly um, and it might look a little contour heavy at times to you, but I am completely thinking about form and the underlying structure. Uh, so it might be helpful to you to start a little simpler. Let's, I'm gonna show you what I mean. So observe, take advantage of the loop feature. This guy, he's what a character. So is this, maybe you do one line here as it's coming down, one going back. Maybe you kind of get an idea where the head is. Cause that one's going back, this leg's going back. Right? And this one's coming forward. The front leg kicks off the back. So like, let's think about it in terms of just some sort of big cat. Big cat's walking. The other leg here, this one coming up on this side, it's closest to us. Now, this one's planted now because this front limb here as this leg comes down it kicks this front limb kicks off of that so as that one lands then the front forelimb picks up so apply that idea with the chimp and ape that we're studying is that one's coming forward it's going back right that one's forward that one's going back this one's coming forward right so it's stretched out there. You can see right as that one lands, it kicks off. He's moving much slower, uh, but that's the idea. But look at how I'm just doing just like kind of these simple lines, keeping it very simple. And then you can build upon that if you want. Think about where the shoulder is. Right? Remember those forms going over as I was showing the rhythm of the forms together where I wasn't not really getting in-depth anatomy in that episode. It's more about seeing the objectivity of the forms and how they relate to one another and how you can manipulate those. This comes forward there. Once again, make, having it make sense. For me, it doesn't make sense that it's going out right there. But I'm going to live on the edge. But we can. As this shoulder comes in, right, tucking behind that one, thinking about this to hit the center where the knee would be. It stretches out in the back there. And this is all just this little line here and this here. It's a um, quick sketch shorthand of showing the muzzle and the skull together. Uh, works very well. So, for instance, if you've got this guy's head, he just looked down, or the one I just looked at. So, I, I look at the skull here, center line access, where the brow ridge would be, and then this would be the muzzle, and then these would be the ears. Right there, that shows all the direction you need. I can tell exactly where he's looking. He's looking down, right? Yeah, so here's that same idea skull where this would be, center line, muzzle, just like that. There's not so much movement in the skull. It's just a cap on the end of the actual uh, action. I wouldn't start with it. You can, um, but it's almost like you have this dead, this ball and then everything's flowing off of it. And the ball doesn't really move as much as everything else does. See even that pose there. Looks the other way. All right. This leg out here. This arm out here like this. He's looking over here. You can feel the twist. You know what's going on, right? Just a few subtle angles that really 
communicate the direction the animal's in. This is walking this way, turns back, right? Stands up and walks, turns, right? Even as he's starting to turn back around this way, that leg kicks back around this mid-movement. It's a tough one to pull off. But you feel that there's weight there. He's giving on his shoulder as he's turning around and looking this way. Don't really see his ears from this angle based on the, the hair of him, you know, as long as hair is. But I love this part as his leg once again kicks around. You see it kick around. Everything's going this way. All the weight's going this way. As he's kicking that leg around to sit down now that way. Look at that. It's a beautiful movement, almost lyrical and dance-like. You know? See how much life there is to that. It almost looks silly, but it's earnest, believable. Uh, it allow you to put your own creatures in positions that are atypical, but believable um, because it's based on the studies of realistic source material. Now it's time to practice. Head over to proka.com slash Coleman and draw from David's live footage. Then post your work in the assignment section to show it off and get critiques from your peers and potentially get selected for the critique video. David's full course has a lot of additional lessons too. You'll learn how to study from master designs and how to draw shape breakdowns to understand a figure and better draw a new creature from imagination. That's at proco.com slash Coleman.